So welcome everyone. Uh, this workshop is going to be making your website pop with JavaScript animations. Um, I'm Aaron Hampson. And just to give a quick um, background about myself, I've been programming for about 15 years now. Um, I started back in the eighth grade for a science fair project. Um, and I got into game modding um, and it just kind of went from there. And then, you know, almost 15 years later, um, I've been through a couple companies. Uh, I started my career at State Farm. I uh, moved to Blue Yonder um, after COVID struck. Uh, my position there was cut. So I ventured over to T-Mobile where I currently reside. Um, so yeah, I've got, you know, a fair bit of industry experience. Um, and, you know, at the end of this uh, workshop, I plan to block some time off for an open Q and A, um, just to give everyone an opportunity to ask questions, um, both about the workshop and, um, you know, just kind of the industry and, you know, and, and such. So a quick overview of what the workshop is going to um, look like in terms of structure. Um, I'm going to go through just a quick overview of JavaScript. Um, you know, some in here may already be familiar with it um, to varying degrees, but I'm also going to assume that others are not. Um, then we'll go through the project. And then, as I mentioned, an open Q&A. Um, I have a few additional resources that, you know, I, I found useful as a developer. Um, doing a lot of work with JavaScript uh, myself that I think are useful to share. And then uh, just a quick closing statement. So to jump right in, um, what is JavaScript? It's a widely used scripting language. It was originally created by Brendan Eich, who is um, the co-founder of, as shown here, many um, parts of Mozilla, who is the um, organization behind what is now Firefox. And despite what many think, JavaScript is actually unrelated to the Java programming language. It has a similar name, but they're, they're not related. So where can one find JavaScript in action? Uh, if you use most any website on the internet, you're going to find JavaScript working behind the scenes in, in some capacity, um, whether it's letting you know that you need to enter an email in the correct format, um, loading images or files, um, animations, which is going to be the topic of today's session. Um, and more recently, it has become um, more prevalent on the server side as well. Uh, and many large companies use a popular runtime called Node.js to handle operations on the, the server side. And just an interesting piece of history um, that I wanted to call some attention to. Uh, so it was 25 years ago today that JavaScript was first um, announced publicly as a joint venture by Netscape and what was then Sun Microsystems, which is now Oracle. So just a, a cool piece of history that JavaScript turned uh, 25 today, which is why it's a couple years younger than me. Um, so let's go over today's project. Uh, what we're going to look to make by the end of this workshop is a simple block breaker game. Um, and what I'm going to strive to do is point out um, opportunities for personalization. Um, originally, I had designed uh, an app, I, I guess I'd call it, um, that I was going to use as part of this workshop, where it would um, take everyone on a, a kind of guided journey, and they'd have a, a personalized um, game at the end of it. but it just 
ended up being a little bit too much work. So I uh, kind of pared it back a little bit. Oh. Move it over there. Um, yeah, so we're gonna build this with plain HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. We're not gonna be using um, any special frameworks or plugins or anything. This is something that um, we'll be able to build using just Notepad. Um, yeah, so with that, Let's go into the initial setup for this. And just to show as well, you know, a little more than just a, a still picture, um, this will be the finished product in some capacity. And then eventually, you know, you break all the, uh, break all the bricks or, you know, miss enough times that, you know, it'll be game over. So yeah, so that's what we're going to be building today. Um, and then to answer the quick question I saw pop up um, about can you code a website in JavaScript, um, you can, but you're going to also need um, you need HTML at least at a at a minimum um, to to effectively code a, code a website. So. You definitely could code one with just JavaScript, but it wouldn't it wouldn't be fun to navigate. Um, so what we'll do first, so I'm gonna minimize this stuff. Um, what I have, I created a folder on my desktop just to, to kind of house these files. Um, so if everyone wants to follow along, um, this will be a pretty easy process. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into the folder. Um, and yours probably won't have the .idea folder. That's just the development tool I use um, when I create this folder. But what we're gonna do is, um, I don't know what, okay. Um, so what we're gonna first do, we're gonna need a folder created, so. I'll go ahead and start that step, I guess. Um, so for Windows machines, you know, just right click new, new folder, and I'm gonna call it code day. Um, for a Chromebook, it, it should be the same. Um, you should be able to right click and um, there should be a new option um, depending on the operating system um, to create a new folder. Um, okay, so not, not having a folder, that, that'll be fine. Um, so let's try the, the next step. So, I guess real quick, let's see. So we won't be going to any websites. Um, for a MacBook, um, yeah, you'll just have to use the, the um, let's see. I'm trying to remember the Mac editor. We'll just have notes. If you have Atom or Sublime um, or any text editor really, um, you can use Notepad. Yeah, if you have Visual Studio Code, uh, VS Code would definitely work. Um, yeah, it, it won't have to be a specific text editor. No. It's just one you'll, you'll need to be able to save a file um, at the end of it. Let me do a quick search for the Chromebook question. Um,
so we're going to create a folder. Um, and then what you can do is using your, um, your favorite text editor, whether that's Notepad on Windows, uh, Visual Studio Code, um, Sublime, Atom. There's a whole host of, of text editors. Um, personally, I'm going to use IntelliJ. This is just what I know. Um, it's my go-to uh, editing tool, but this will be no different than um, using Notepad. So what you'll do is, um, if you're using text editor, you'll create a new file. Um, and you'll have a, probably have a blank file. Um, So what you want to do is just immediately do a file, save as, um, and name it index.html. So I'll give everyone a second to make that file. So um, with our index HTML file, so just create that file in, in your text editor and saved it off to you know, the folder you made. Um, what we'll then do is just enter um, a little bit of simple HTML. So We'll first specify the doc type is HTML. Um, we'll create the opening and closing HTML tag, just like that. We'll create a head for, um, for this file. And within the head, we'll add a title. And we can just put anything into that tag. Um, so then once we have that, we're going to create um, one of the most important components of making this, um, making this animation come to life. And that's going to be the canvas. Um, so in terms of those that are, um, you know, finding themselves unable to follow along due to the text editor, um, issue or other things. Um, I am going to be posting the GitLab, or not sorry, not GitLab, GitHub link um, at the end of my slides um, and the slides on, uh, on Discord so everyone has access to those. Um, so if you're not able to follow along, um, if you just want to kind of, you know, observe, come along for the ride and the, the knowledge of it, um, then I think that's probably the best idea for the moment. Um, and then as to the question about script tags, we will be using script tags in uh, a couple minutes. Yep. So we create a, a canvas. Um, we'll give it an ID. Um, and this is going to be important for when we start writing the JavaScript. Um, we're going to need to reference this idea later. So I'm just going to call it Canvas because that's just easy. Um, and then we'll also have to specify a with tag or with property. And this is what I used for the with. And 
the height. Um, oh, yeah. And then the one thing I realized I forgot, um, we have to put a opening and closing body tag. So I'll give everyone a second um, just to make sure that they've got that so far. And then what we're going to need to do is create another file. So again, in um, you know, a, a text editor um, or your um, IDE like VS Code. Um, go and create a new file. And just do a file save as, and we're going to name this one um, uh, styles.css. And this is where we're, we're going to put all of our styling um, for this project. And we're just going to need to add a simple bit of styling at first uh, for the canvas because it, by default, is transparent. Um, and we want to make sure that we can see it when we uh, load the page and, and test it. So we're going to give it a background property. Um, and Here's another point where you can you know, customize it. Um, I'm probably just going to give it a, a simple whitish gray. Um, but you can make that background any color that, that you want to. And then we just need to add a display property. Um, so in terms of seeing the colors, um, so it's not supported by the community IntelliJ, so you need the ultimate version. Ah, oh, OK. Um, so for seeing the colors, um, you can use just like the, you know, the normal word for color. Um, you don't have to use the, um, the hex code, which is um, what starts with a pound sign. Um, so if CSS isn't supported by community, I thought community did. Um, Okay, well, so here's a lesson on, you know, <laughs> software development, um, be adaptable. So we're going to ignore um, the styles.css file, and we're going to put the style in the header, or the, and the, the, the head tag, yeah, not the header. Um, so we'll go and create a style tag. And then we'll just put the styling in here and we'll have it um, running in the same file. And we also want to add a margin property to it, which will um, center the canvas on the screen. So what we'll be able to do now um, is if you've got the index file, index.html file created, um, go ahead and save it. And then 
what we're going to do then, um, and this should be the same on Windows or Mac. We're going to find where you save the index.html file, uh, click on it, and then just hit enter. Yeah, um, in terms of sharing out the, the code written, yeah, I, um, yeah, I'll definitely look into another way um, for sharing it besides GitHub for those that don't have GitHub accounts. Um, I think you can view it without having a GitHub account because I did make it a public project. Um, so I don't think you'll need a GitHub account to view it. Um, but yeah, I will, I will double check and make sure that you know, it's, a, it's as accessible as I can make it. So we'll click on index, hit um, enter, and open it. OK. Um, and this is what, what you should see so far. And the gray block um, is the canvas. If you entered a different color, then your block would be, you know, the color that you entered. Um, so, is there anyone so far that has um, has their canvas showing up in a web browser window? Doesn't uh, doesn't work on Mac. Um, I mean, it should because I I do my main day job development on a Mac. Um, so I guess the steps are just a bit different. Um, yeah. So I'll go back to the HTML code real quick and give everyone a chance to catch up. Um. Yeah, so if if it's showing up blank, um, odds are it's with the styling um, or the index.html file was not saved. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, so if you're on a Mac, um, you should just be able to right click on the file. Um, and hit open with, and then choose either Google Chrome, uh, or Safari, or Firefox, depending upon, you know, the web browser that you use. Uh, for increasing the size of the canvas, you can increase it. Um, the way the the way I wrote, <clears throat> sorry, um, yeah, the way I wrote out the settings, uh, the 480 by 320 is what it should be right now. Um, there's some odd behavior when you mess with the settings um, for the sizing. But it's, it's definitely something you can play around with. Um, so we'll go ahead and move into the meat and potatoes of this of this workshop, which is the JavaScript. Um, and th again, if you're able to follow along, um, you know that'll be great. If not. I'm still going to try and explain things in a way that, you know, hopefully you'll be able to take some, um, you know, some information about out um, 
about JavaScript. Uh, text editor for Mac, um, VS Code probably would be the one I'd recommend. Um, it's free, so that um, yeah, I can copy and paste. Actually, that's what I'll do to make this easy for everyone. Um, I'll copy and paste the HTML. I'll, I'll put at least that. Um, and then we'll figure out a solution for the JavaScript as this goes on. Um, so if the screen is too small, let me make my font just a slight bit bigger. Um, there. That should be a little bit more readable. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do, and again, just to avoid issues with um, the editors, we're going to do this in a single file, which this isn't the best practice. Um, you know, definitely, you should have a separate HTML, a separate CSS, a separate JavaScript file. Um, but you know, we're going to adapt this on the fly. So what we're going to then do is create the script tag. Um, not seeing the code I copy pasted. Um, sent that. There we go. Okay, so there's the HTML that should have gone to all attendees now. Um, and that's where we're at so far. For VS Code, you I don't believe need any extensions for JavaScript. I think it has JavaScript support out of the box. Um, yeah. So it does okay. what we're then going to do is begin writing our JavaScript. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create a canvas object in, in JavaScript. And you can do that by um, the keyword let, which is uh, JavaScript's way of identifying a variable. And I'm going to name it canvas. Um, because this will be an object that refers to this canvas um, that's on the HTML. And the way you fetch the canvas is by calling a uh, document um, and then get element by ID. And then the ID of the canvas. So uh, that's what we're going to use to get the instance of the canvas we created. And then alongside the canvas, we also need a context. And that's going to be used. Um, I'd say the way I describe a context is like a paintbrush. Um, you're gonna have to have a paintbrush to paint on the canvas. So we're going to get um, a 2D context because we're gonna be drawing in a 2D space here. 
Um, you know, if we want to do anything with three dimensional um, work, then there's that option as well. But for the sake of this, we're going to keep it two dimensional. And then now that we have that, that's what we need to begin drawing the elements that will um, make up the, the pieces of the game. So the first thing you need to do is invoke context that begin path. Um, I would say think of this as putting your paintbrush to the canvas or your pencil to a piece of paper to begin drawing. So this tells it to begin. And then what we're going to do is just to test that the canvas works, we're going to call the the rect function, which uh, stands for rectangle. And then it's going to need four values. So it'll need uh, that we will give it. And what these values are, um, are the beginning x coordinate on the canvas and the beginning y coordinate. And then the um, width and the height of the rectangle. So then the next thing we'll have to do with that is decide what color we're going to make it. And you specify that by using fill style. And here's another place where you can um, customize it some. You can put in any color um, that you want. So I'm just going to do orange. But you can do red, yellow, blue. Um, it'll take an A hex code. Um, so anything that you all choose for the color for that. And then you'll need to give the fill command. And then finally, you'll need to close the path. So once you have um, yeah, these five lines, what that'll do is um, begin drawing. It'll draw a rectangle. It'll fill it with your color. Or you specify your color, then it fills it. And then it closes the path, which would be you know, picking up your pencil or picking up the paintbrush from the canvas. So once you get to this point, you should again be able to um, run the file that you created. So in Windows, you can double click or just click and enter. On Mac, you can right click your index file and hit open with, um, and then like Chrome or, or Safari. So you should see something like this. Um, once you get that step completed, you'll have the canvas and you'll have um, the block drawing. Yeah, so let canvas and let context. Um, I'm going to put this in chat again. So everyone's got it. Um, yeah, what let canvas and let context do um, is create the definition that you'll use to refer to um, the canvas on the HTML. So these act as sort of a bridge between your JavaScript and your HTML. Um, but the, these are what's needed to perform the JavaScript methods on, um, you know, on the HTML elements. So has anyone 
um, successfully gotten um, a square of the uh, the color of their choice to show up. Okay, so we've got a couple. Good, good. And again, those that are um, having some issues with it, um, if yours wasn't if yours wasn't the color you chose, or if it's black, um, you'll want to double check the fill style. Um, if it's just a white screen, also double check that you have the style um, correct, because if this isn't specified, the canvas won't show up. Um, and then make sure that your ID matches here. Um, so there's a couple places that, you know, they're, they're kind of potential pitfalls. Yeah, it works. So what was what was the issue um, that you had to see the canvas know the let code is working properly on my IntelliJ project? Huh, yeah, I'm using IntelliJ also though. I'm using the ultimate edition and the, the community edition does have a different set of plugins and languages that it supports. Um, yeah. So again, with all the these, I think following along for right now. Um, um, yeah. So let's go ahead and You'll be able to see the rectangle. You won't be able to see the canvas if you don't give it the style. This is needed for the canvas to show up. Um, and then the fill style is important for the shape. So what we're gonna do to go ahead and make, um, if you wanna use an image as the background of a canvas, um, there's other ways to do that. Canvas probably wouldn't be the best um, best choice for that. You'd want to use Canvas for when you're drawing um, elements like this um, and when you're kind of animating things. But you could use um, the source element um, and then apply um, the link to the image. Um, and then you could use some CSS to display it that way. Um, so yeah, so we got the square. So let's go ahead and draw the ball. So let's go and delete the square real quick. Um, so we're gonna switch from a square to a ball or a circle. Um, Uh, let's see. We need to do an arc, which is, yeah, they call it the, to make a circle, you have to use a function called arc instead of something called circle. So it's a little bit um, unintuitive. So it's one, you know, definitely take note of. And then, Let's see what values should we use. So we'll give it that. And then it needs the end angle. So we'll give it the pi function. And then we have to give it a fill style again. That. Okay. 
So in doing that step, um, what we're going to do, so we replaced the square with a circle. Um, yeah, and this is what defines the circle, which arc um, makes sense to me why they named it that, but at the same time, you know, calling it circle would have been a lot, um, a lot more user friendly, in my opinion. But yeah, we'll use that to create the circle. Um, fill, give it the fill color, fill it, uh, close the path. Yeah, I think you could use an, create an eclipse um, using Gar. Yeah, the the CSS is is right up here. It's in the the style tag up the top. Yeah, I had to I had to inline the the CSS. Um, so it's all there. Yeah, and the, the JS. Yep. So I'll go ahead and again drop the code there so far uh, for what we got. Um, and then again, you know, same procedure. And then now you'll see a circle instead of a, um, a square. Yeah, so the values inside the arc function, um, like creating a, a rectangle, um, you'll have the x and the y coordinates. Um, yeah, if the color is wrong, it's likely going to depend on what you entered in fill style. Um, and then you have the radius of the circle, which the radius is the um, like the width from one end of the circle to the other. So that's in easy terms, that's the, the size of the circle. Um, and then you have the start angle end angle. Um, the dimensions of the arc and pixels. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure the dimensions offhand. Um, it's a it's a radius. The radius of the circle is ten pixels, and then um, was it two pi r? It's like a circumference of like sixty, I think, off the top of my head. Yeah, there was no inlined uh, CSS. Um, Let's see, and then for giving it like a hash value, yeah, instead of orange, um, yeah, zero, zero would be the top left corner, yep. So if you want to give the color hash value instead, you can use just hashtag, you know, EEE -E -E or, you know, any of those. I'm just using the, uh, you know, the plain text. Um, Um, the names to make it easy. Yeah. Again, I'm gonna keep post. I'll keep posting the code as I go. Um, so I posted that. Um, so we've got a ball now. Then um, we're gonna need to make the um, the ball move. Um, so what, what we'll want to do first is figure out where the initial starting point of the ball is going to be. So we can do that by creating uh, two more variables, one to represent x, and one um, 
one to equal y to represent y. Um, we'll start x at um, I guess the, probably the middle of the canvas is good. So we'll do canvas.width and then um, we'll divide that by two. So that will put the ball um, in the center of the canvas along the width. Then what we'll do is take the height of the canvas and let's put it like 35 pixels. Um, and that will go to the maximum height of the canvas. Um, and then just subtract 35 pixels from that and place the um, place the canvas there. So now we've got our x and y. Um, one of the things that we should do then is replace the 50 um, in the arc function, the first one, with the x and replace the second one with y. So what we're doing there is taking our values um, and putting them into variables that um, we can manipulate before we pass, um, pass them into uh, different function calls. As we'll as we'll later do. So what we'll also want to do is um, turn this into a method, or I'm sorry, not method, a function, um, because to animate the ball, we're going to be repeatedly. Um, we're going to be repeatedly drawing the circle. So to do that, we can create a function using the function keyword and then draw a ball. Um, and then putting uh, the curly braces around it. So yeah, the circle will um, need to be redrawn for every frame um, to animate it because this is the way this is done. It's it's a frame by frame animation. So um, we'll see in a second why you have to redraw it. Um, there's definitely something I was gonna explain. Yeah, you know, it's it's kind of an annoying part of JavaScript animation. So we'll create this, this function. Um, yes, that's good. And then um, what we'll need to do then is at the bottom of this call that method. Otherwise, if you've tried to run it after writing this, the ball will probably disappeared because this method isn't getting called at all. So. Um, it's called draw ball. So if you run it from that point, you'll see the ball. But right now, the ball is still stationary. So what we're going to need to do is develop a way to move the ball. So let's add two more values. And we'll call these um, dx. and dy, which the name for these comes from, um, from calculus. So I'm not going to dive too deep into that explanation. Um, but these will be used to specify the, the change in the x value and the change in the y. So this will be the, the motion. So 
So what we'll do, we'll do that with a value of two. We'll do that one with a value of negative two. Um, and then, uh, What we're going to want to do is um, this is so this is the part where we're actually going to create the motion um, by changing the x and y values using these new dx values we created. Um, this is what's actually going to uh, give our ball motion. So I'm going to go ahead and confirm real quick. Um, Oh, yeah. So then what we'll have to do in order to make sure that it keeps calling that function, because right now that would only call um, draw ball once, we'll have to call set interval. And what you can do with this is pass in a function. And this second value is milliseconds. So when this code is run, this will draw the ball every 10 milliseconds. So it calls this. So we'll see um, the ball moving then. So to the earlier question about needing to redraw the circle, this is why. Because every 10 milliseconds, the canvas is drawing a new circle, but it's not clearing the previous circle. So the frames are, are stacking on one another instead of you know, looking like they're actually moving. Yeah, so we're going to clear the frames um, as we animate them. Yeah, that's what we're going to have to um, have to do um, in order for it to show correctly. And we're coming up on what, 20, 2010? Hmm. Um, so yeah, what we'll need to do before invoking each, um, before each, each circle is drawn, um, is clear the canvas. Um, so we'll start at zero, zero, and then we want to clear the whole canvas. So we'll specify the width as the width of the canvas and the height is the height of the canvas. Oh. Yeah, CTX, I would copy paste my other uh, for my notes. Um, so yeah, so that first one should be context again. Um, so we'll clear the canvas and then completely redraw. Um, the interval will run, clear the canvas, draw the ball, move, um, the coordinates will move, clear the canvas, so on and so forth. So I'll go ahead and put Ah, yes, I did. That was a very good catch. I'm glad you're all paying attention. I put that in there as a task, you know, making sure you're all uh, paying attention. Uh, yeah. Okay, so 
I'll go and drop this code in the uh, in the chat there. I hope we'll look for one. What you'll see then, hopefully, you'll see the ball. And you know, to keep going off the screen, so we'll have to set boundaries and, and things like that. Um, but no, it's um, the spacing won't affect it like like Python. Um, it's not, yeah, it's not strict on spacing. Generally, you would have um, two spaces. Is the common um, the common syntax I see for JavaScript? But it could be two or four, or really whatever. It doesn't, yeah. Like if I did this, it's still going to run just fine. Um, yeah. So if you increase the, the time, let's now let's add up to a thousand milliseconds. So one one second. Um, Yeah, so if you, if you change the time, what you'll see is the ball moves a lot slower. So that's, that's at one second that it calls that draw. So, you know, conversely, let's change it to one millisecond. I don't know if we'll have a chance to see it. Yeah, it's, it's off there. Um, so let's see, we've got about 20 minutes left. Um, I definitely do want to leave time for you know, Q&A. Um, so I'll kind of wrap up at least this part of it for the moment. Um, and just kind of explain how you know, this could be applied to you know, your all's projects this weekend. Um, yeah, if the gray box isn't showing up, probably styling. Um, um, yeah, it's probably styling, depending upon what change for background. Um, if the ball isn't showing up, it's likely within this. Um, so that's some of the kind of common debugging things. Um, but you know, some ways that you all would be able to use this this weekend for, for your projects, um, if you play around with you know, different shapes, uh, different colors, different sizes of things, you know, the different interval, um, having multiple canvases, um, you know, different CSS settings. Um, in the GitHub I'm going to share with the completed version of this, um, it also shows how to take keyboard input. It'll detect um, when you push the left and the right keys. Um, it has collision detection, so it'll, it'll detect when the ball hits one of the boundaries, like the wall, um, the edge of the canvas, things like that. So if you're looking to make a, like a web-based game in JavaScript, um, you know, that code that I'm going to share has a lot of good things I think you could kind of tear apart and, you know, take a look into. Um, and just while I'm at it, that is not okay. Where is it? There it is. This one. So this is a the project I talked about earlier, um, where I had said that um, you know I was working on a project prior that I was hoping to to share with you all. Um, I did a little bit differently, where I had a configuration that you'd be able to go in and again this code is available out there if you all want to pull pieces from it use it you know by all means feel free um have to do so so i gave you the ability to configure things like the size of the ball the paddle how many bricks you know messages how many lives you get um you know, the different colors of things so um I just want to kind of give you all some, some of a kind of a generic JavaScript toolkit um, to, to look from um, and, and be able to, you know, hopefully draw some inspiration from really. 
Um, and kind of the last thing I want to show before I go to Q and A, um, another app. I just again hope to give you all some ideas, you know, for this weekend. Um, is an app is you know it's the app I was working on. Um, Uh, it's not going to run on. <laughs> oh, that's right. It's not going to work my other. Yeah, we have about you have about fifteen minutes to the next workshop. Um, yeah, that app isn't going to run. So I'm going to go ahead and move to this. Um, so really, you know gave a bit of a, a quick overview on on javascript animations and it you know to be very honest about it that was it was very um uh it, it was scratching the surface of what javascript animations can do um you know really was hoping there's more of a, a thought starter um, that was kind of my goal for this whole workshop was to help you know give you all ideas so we've got about 15, 14 15 minutes um you know, to the to the Python workshop. So I did want to open up, you know, to have one have um, just a short question answers uh, segment. If you all have any questions, you know, about this workshop, questions about the uh, tech industry, um, you know, with my experience with it so far, um, you know, tools to use for like a project you're working on, you know, questions about project, you know, this weekend in general. You want to learn how to uh, build a box to make a PS5 or an Xbox? I got you guys there. Um, yeah, so to change the trajectory of the ball, um, you're going to need to change um, the DX and DY values. Um, that would change it. Then also working on adding some of the collision as well would help um, help you change it. Um, so for JavaScript being utilized in design only or other ways, <clears throat> yeah. So JavaScript can be used um, you know, for animations. It can be used for things like I mentioned, um, validation of a, of a form field. So if you enter, say, a username and a password, and you log into um, like Facebook, um, that says incorrect pa username or password. Um, those kinds of error messages sometimes are done with JavaScript. Um, and then also JavaScript's used on the server side now that, um, that you can build backend um, systems with. So you could have um, JavaScript interacting with with databases and JavaScript, you know, doing all kinds of crazy things. Um, it's really a, a very flexible language. Um, and it has a lot of applications. Um, what else we got question wise? I'll see a couple in the Q&A also. Um, so let's see, I'll kind of bounce back and forth. So best sites to learn JavaScript. Um, what I'm going to do, I've got some additional resources here for you all. And this is, again, just scratching the surface. Um, I've got a whole just slew of resources I could I could give somebody, but I didn't want to overwhelm you all. So I just kept it to a couple really good um, trusted ones. Um, so again, I'm going to share these slides out, and then the Git the GitHub code as well. Um, so that'll all be shared out. Um, so let me switch to the Q and A stuff. Um, let's see. So, question for the tech industry: What can a senior in high school do to prepare for a computer science degree and gain some experience in programming? Um, let's see. Yeah. So, so with that, my career path to 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 where I got my um, computer science degree was starting um, 
starting um, yeah, start for Science Fair project, kind of like you all here with, with Code Day. Um, I see a lot of similarities with that and just kind of being curious about it. And then um, I started getting more experience when people found out I knew how to code um, by doing freelance web development. Uh, I made some very simple websites, you know, very simple HTML, very simple CSS, very simple JavaScript, and um, kind of built on that. Because my I'm, I'm primarily a front-end engineer. So all of what I do is, is uh, like user interface design. Um, so it was just looking for opportunities to do things like freelancing and looking for, um, I guess just different ways I could incorporate code into, into my hobbies was really another big one for me. Um, you know, on the side, I am um, also a prop and costume maker um, and I've incorporated electronics into some of my work with um, 3D printing and, and other things. And some of that needs coding. So finding a way to integrate your, you know, hobbies with coding, that's that's a great way to prepare for, you know, getting a CS degree. You'll be, you'll be ahead of the game then. But also a lot of on-the-job learning. You know, that's gonna be another big one. Um, publishing an app made in HTML and JavaScript and publishing that main JavaScript. So um, there's different platforms you can use uh, to deploy um, websites and then JavaScript apps. Uh, Heroku is a good one. Um, and I'll drop that in the chat here real quick. And it's, it's free to use and actually would be a great um, application to look into for a great I guess, website or a tool rather to look into for um, working on a project this weekend. It's something I use for my personal work quite a lot just to kind of have a playground to deploy things to and test it. Um, it's something I would definitely recommend using. Um, yeah, adding zero margin to the canvas that was used for um, centering yeah, the zero auto is used to center the canvas on the on the web page. That's just part of the way CSS works with that. Um, yeah. So let's see. Um, yeah, does anyone have any other questions about anything? Um, like I said projects or whatnot. So yeah, in conclusion, um, if you all have questions throughout the weekend, um, I'm definitely gonna be online um, throughout the weekend. Um, I'm on the Code Day Discord. Uh, that's that's my Discord tag there. Um, if you all want to see the finished code, there's a link to it. And I am going to go ahead and put that in the chat right now because there is there's a lot more code um, in there and a lot more about the project. It was just you know a matter of pacing and the you know the time we had. So there's definitely a lot more you can all learn there. Um, yeah, so that's the GitHub with it. And then, like I alluded to, um, if you're looking for inspiration um, when it comes to working with electronics, like microcontrollers, Arduinos, Raspberry Pis, 3D printing, anything like that, drop my Instagram tag there as well. Um, so I'm more, I copied it. Yeah, I copied it from the Code Day Discord earlier. If you do a search without the hashtag, it might find me. Um, but yeah, so if you all have any, you know, questions about JavaScript or anything like that, I can definitely, definitely help. I have a, a wealth of knowledge on it besides animations and, you know, 
definitely more than willing to to share the knowledge. So, yeah, that's all I got. Um, you know, thanks everyone for uh, for attending. Uh, add you on LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If you if you'd like to come on LinkedIn, I'm not active on on LinkedIn, but yeah. Um, yeah, definitely appreciate everyone's time today. Um, you know, from, yeah, hopefully uh, you all have have fun this weekend because that's you know that's the main thing when it comes to coding. It it, it can be a stressful thing at times, but just remember to get up, take you know five ten minute break, stretch, get some water. You know the code will be there. Just have fun with it. That's you know the most important thing of it. So, yeah. This next presentation will be Python. That's a that's a fun language. So, hope we all have fun, learn some stuff from that too. Yeah. Thanks for joining, everyone. <laughs>